cavers are the ones that made the initial discoveries, and then I would follow them crawling through the passages and so forth to collect the bones. These older entrances are places where we had sink, where there existed sinkholes uh, from the surface. These probably are roof collapses into rooms, and then they would be marked by underground by a pile of debris that came there, and this would leave the, leave the shaft open to the surface, and then animals would either fall in or, in a lot of cases, actively move in and use it for shelter. These things did not open up and close up at the same time. And we now know this from the radiocarbon dates that we have on three of them. The time range of the, the youngest radiocarbon dates at one locality were about 13,000 years, and then at the other locality it was 15,000 years, and the oldest one was 23,000 years. So we had two, or we had three different age, age uh, spots in there that we could uh, look at to see what was around. This is the um, opening that holds the most of the skeleton, we presume, of a Colombian mammoth. The mammoth being the lar is the largest animal uh, that we find represented here. It's a very, very, it's a close relative to the modern elephants. It's very slightly larger, with much larger tusks. That would be the, mo the biggest difference that you would notice if you saw one standing in the parking lot. The coolest thing we found well, it's not very cool to look at or spectacular, but it's interesting and that we got the lower milk canine of a saber-toothed cat, Homotherium. Now, this is not any bigger than the end of your thumb, but it's an animal that's not very common, as most large carnivores are not common. And it was interesting to see that they were here in Williamson County. It was also interesting to get in the older fill over here, remains of uh, Glyptodont, a big armadillo relative, and there are scutes, dermal armor scutes, not very many, but they're absolutely identifiable as Glyptodon. This is an animal whose carapace would be almost as big as a, as a uh, Volkswagen bug. And the other uh, interesting thing that came out of this older pit over here was the remains of the Mexican free-tailed bat. Now uh, that bat is the common cave bat, guano bat in Texas, uh, it lives here by the tens of millions, but it apparently was a very late arrival at the end of the glacial, last glacial stage. We're not sure of everywhere, but it, uh, in Kerr County it was about 2,000 years ago. However, here it is in inner space at about 23,000 years ago, and I think the significant thing there is that that marks that's the time of the last warm spell and the last major glaciation before the last glacial maximum. Uh, the more recent material, such as the material that comes out of these caves right here, has a record in it of how animals that we are fairly familiar with have responded to environmental changes and how might then the living fauna and flora might respond to changes coming down the road. So I think that there's a a potential lesson there for us that we should think very hard about what might happen if the climate changes in a particular way uh, in the next, say, millennium, century or millennium, and can we draw, go back and look at this record to see whether or not we get some clues as to how things might change.